Liberalism's optimistic view of mankind has a touchy-feely appeal. Although there is no society throughout history that supports this claim, it is more pleasant to the mind to believe we're on our way to the perfect, peaceful society. Reality can be hard, it can be cruel, it can be unpleasant, but the liberal mind is not bound by reality, but prefers feelings. This is part of how the liberal has managed to recruit so well in the past century and do so across all races, income groups, and so on. But the biggest appeal of liberalism is the belief that they are the party who cares about others, and conservatives are just greedy white bigots taking advantage of everyone else. If liberalism is the politics of kindness, it follows that conservatism must be the opposite, heartless. Liberals are compassionate and conservatives are mean. Liberal influencers work overtime to enforce the idea that conservatives object to liberal policies because they don't care about poor or minority groups, and they're just big meanies. New York Times columnist Paul Krugman contends that conservatives want to limit government spending on social welfare programs because they take positive glee in inflicting further suffering on the already miserable. Most of the time, not all the time, by any means, and the further left you go, the meaner the spirit, but many liberal people are utterly decent people. By the way, they can't say that about us. They can't. The moment liberals acknowledge that a conservative can be as kind and well-intentioned as they, they have, take, they have cut the rug from under them. They have removed it from under them. They must believe we mean poorly. That is, if they didn't believe we were mean-spirited, they couldn't stay liberal. They have to believe they mean better than we, but we don't have to believe that we mean better than them. We have to believe that we do better than them. We measure morality by what happens, not what is intended. This push of being the party of nice has helped liberalism recruit so well. Through its corruption and indoctrination of the education system, the media, and Hollywood influencers, they have managed to make themselves fashionable to the young. But at the heart of modern-day liberalism is pure narcissism masquerading as the good guy who really cares about others. It is an ideology fueled by its own self-absorbed nature. The big government liberal stands at the podium announcing that they will be taking more of the money or freedoms of its citizens, predominantly the working or the wealthy, and use that money to provide aid to those in poverty, and they are cheered for doing this. The cheering, the applause, the notoriety makes the liberal politician feel good. It makes them feel good about themselves. Giving away other people's money against their will without having to earn any of it makes them feel like they're helping society progress, and it's a feeling that they are addicted to. It is nothing but selfishness. Leftism is all about narcissism. It's all about helping yourself because socialism is about narcissism. Socialism is based on the, on the fundamental premise, I'm breathing, I'm here, feed me. Socialism is all about selfishness, it's all about narcissism, it's all about a, an overweening sense of, of superiority based on nothing you've ever done. Because socialists, by and large, do not build business, businesses, they don't make people's lives better, they don't increase the, uh, the, the efficacy of government, they don't make people's prosperity happen. They don't do any of these things. They didn't build that, in other words. But they take credit for that because it makes them feel better. Citizens of liberal welfare states become increasingly narcissistic. You know what the big worry of the Western European is? It certainly isn't, how do I protect countries like America worries about protecting countries, right? 37,000 Americans died saving South Korea from becoming like North Korea. How many Germans died uh, saving South Korea? How many French? How many Italians? How many Spaniards? We die for others. You know what the big, uh, the big concern of Western Europeans? All Western Europeans. Vacation time. They riot over vacation time. They riot over what age is the retirement age. Riots take place over these issues. This is narcissism. And that's it. That's the big concern. I want a four-day work week. I want it all paid for. The European Union has now added under its list of human rights. Are you ready? I couldn't make this up. The right to travel on a vacation to a foreign country. It is now in the list of human rights. It's not a privilege, it's a human right.
This inherent narcissism and in the ideology of liberalism has played a major role in its growth and appeal to young people. Everyone wants to feel good about themselves, and by being a liberal you can feel good about yourself too. And everyone will know you're a good person, just be a liberal. Their feelings are the most important thing to them, and it takes priority over everything else, including your rights and a free society in general. The big government liberal champions Obamacare so that the poor can get health care for free. But it's not free. Everyone else is paying for it against their will. So the big government liberal gets to tell themselves and everyone else that they care for the poor. And even though it's not affordable and on pace to put our country in nearly $30 trillion in debt by 2026, that's okay because it's about the here and the now. The conservative who points this out and wants to get rid of Obamacare because it is a fiscal disaster and going to bankrupt our children and grandchildren becomes the villain. They are the bad guy for looking ahead and considering the harm they are putting on future generations who are not at any fault. You cannot be more selfish than to push for policies that we cannot afford and put the debt on future generations to satisfy their own feelings in the present. Ardent liberals like George Ramos, when asked how many immigrants should be allowed into this country because we can't support all of Latin America coming here, doesn't give an answer. He doesn't want to answer because putting a limit on any amounts of immigrants would be turning someone away and make him feel bad. But this is exactly the type of people that liberals elect and exactly the type of people who are not qualified to lead. Because when people at the top will not make tough decisions to the betterment of the country, they will choose what's detrimental to the people in order to protect their own ego. But people in positions of responsibility sometimes have to be the bad guy. Liberalism is like the child who, when their father punishes them, says that they're a bad father. The father is punishing his child not because he enjoys being mean, but because he cares about his child and their development in the future. The easy thing to do is say yes. The difficult thing to do is say no. The parent who says yes to anything their child wants is not doing it because they love their child. They're doing it because it makes them feel good to see their child happy, and their selfish desire to feel good in the present overrules the best thing for the child in the future. The father who lets his child run amok is doing so out of selfishness. The liberal who pushes disastrous policies does the same. Even when the Muslim migration in Europe becomes a disaster, they pat themselves on the back because their intentions are good. But this type of claim implies that the motivations for the conservative, who said all along that this Muslim migration in Europe will be terrible for the people of these countries, must not have had good intentions. Their intentions weren't to look ahead and consider the consequences of such actions and what it will do to the native people of their country who elected them into office and have to be the bad guy and make the right decision in the best interests of his native country is the bad guy. The conservative acts like the adult and the liberal invites disaster, yet applaud themselves over the conservative because the conservative was against this not because it was the responsible or adult thing to do, but they must have been against it because they were bigots, making the liberals' motivations superior to the conservatives. Our national debt continues to soar, and liberals still protest the government for the mandatory minimum wages, free college, free health care, free contraceptives, and anything else free they can get their hands on. Saying no to free health care or free college tuition makes them feel mean. The liberal cares not where the money actually comes from. Just put it on our tab and let future generations foot the bill. The bigger the state, the less we do for one another. That is why Americans with the same exact socioeconomic status as Western Europeans give far more charity and volunteer far more time. In a world where saying anything negative about anything else is evil allows true evil to operate and the self-absorbed motivations of, of the liberal is why the evils of the world have piggybacked onto liberalism because their selfishness prevents them from criticizing bad things because they will feel mean and liberals will shield true evil from criticism from those who say mean things about them those with the courage to confront evil are the villains and those who are actually evil deserve protection and so liberals can do whatever they please because those bad words are worse than whatever bad acts Actions, liberals do in response. The Tea Partiers who protest the government's excessive spending, putting enormous amounts of debt on our children and grandchildren, are domestic terrorists. The Occupy Wall Street groups, the Black Lives Matter groups, the illegal immigrants who rape women, the Muslims who raped women, are all accepted because while their actions are bad, their actions are only the results of bad institutions. The victims of liberalism, the women who get raped, the people that get murdered, the police that are killed, the families that suffer, are not to be thought about very much. And when conservatives try to proactively call these things out, they are silenced as racist, homophobic, sexist bigots. And in recent years, the effort to silence dissenters from liberalism has been intensified, and we've reached a point where recognizing reality is a hateful act, which is now called hate speech.